you want to know how good is the Draco in Uber 10? Then I'll tell you. Hello and welcome to another JMP video. I'm your host Leonardo and today I'll be talking about the Draco in Uber 10. So the Draco is just going to be one of those characters that I do feel that it, it took me a long while to actually make. And that's because this is one of those characters that is very, very hard to actually form a proper opinion. The reason being is just that this might be one of the more complicated characters to actually explain what I mean in certain words. And what do I mean is just that... After doing testing with this character, I still cannot properly form a, an actual opinion that is valid. And yeah, I, again, it's just opinion. Opinion is a preference. Preference is just per individual. But for me, just trying to just inform you guys of just how do I think of the character in general is very difficult for me. This is probably one of the more difficult for me to actually just properly do a, a, an opinion because it is such an interesting character. First and foremost, stats. Here's the stats. Pause the video if you want. Here's my equipment. Critical damage, movement speed, all pieces of gear, energy region ring. I use in the movement speed banner, ally. I have arcane and trailblazing because damage and movement speed. Conjure Crusade by my own vital choice, no food, and the Night subclass. That's my uh, equipment, and I have a Crystal Level 4 full set uh, base with Fully Pro. Now, I'm not going to just explain all of the equipment with the Draco, because the Draco is kind of flexible, and uh, also at the same time, it's not very important to be talking about the equipment of the Draco, because I need to be talking about the Draco more so in general. But also, here's my gems. So my gems are going to be from top left, top right. Bottom left, bottom right. Uh, from all of my power gem abilities, my gem rolls, you're also seeing it right there. So the gem rolls are going to be the level 5, 10, and 15 upgrades that you do get with each gem. So those are going to be the gem rolls or the large upgrade. Now, I will be mentioning the, uh, the only empowered gem ability that I will recommend, aside from obvious, the Pirates and the class gem ability, is going to be either Cubic Curtain or Vampire and Vanquisher. You must have one of the two if you're willing to use this character somewhat efficiently in Uber 10. My honest recommendation is obviously to have Vampire and Vanquisher because it's essential with any character, but if you want to use this character for something like Leviathan or Dells for high DPS purposes, then you know, you can use something like Cubic Kern to fill up the gap that is, you know, Vampire and Vanquisher because this character's survivability is kind of lackluster, especially on the earlier games, like early mid games, the character's survivability is a little bit lackluster, even more so if you're not using maximum health gear like I'm using in the background footage that you're seeing right there. The background footage, I do believe I do have maximum health on both hat and face. So I do have like 800 plus K HP so I can actually resist and with Cubic Curtain so it does help me out with survivability and sometimes I'm, I need to be careful that I don't die. So yes, the survivability on the character is kind of lackluster. I did get flagged in the, in the previous video which it was on the end game on the Draco but yeah, it, it is pretty bad. So yeah, just make sure to have at least one of the two. I personally have Cubic Curtain, I don't have Vampire and Vanquisher but uh, I did test that out with Vampire and Vanquisher and yes it makes a huge difference so make sure to get either or or both if you can instead of just going over each and every single ability i will be ta start talking about the draco in general and then i'll be going into each and every single ability so probably the next probably five to six minutes or maybe even longer is just going to be me talking about the character in my own personal experience of, of just talking about this character which is a first for this type of series now the draco was probably one of the most interesting characters for me to use the reason being is just that the character is pretty slow in terms of kill time. Well, not kill time, but in terms of clear time, moving from dungeon to dungeon, momentum, all that stuff. It's a setup character, so supposed to be slow. But even still, the kill time, the actual kill time, just killing the enemies is really quickly, which makes no sense. Considering that if you do kill quickly, it means that you are very quickly to move from dungeon to dungeon. It means that you're also very, very quick to actually just, you know, get yourself like a dungeon clear time. But no, the thing is with this character, it's just that it has almost the same problem as something like the Pirate Captain. So the Pirate Captain can dish out really good DPS. But the thing is with the Pirate Captain is that you have to throw down the turrets. You have to throw down the ult so that everything just targets out one enemy. And once it targets the enemy, everything will kill like immediately. The thing with the Draco is that if you're not with their ultimate ability, your basic attack doesn't kill really quickly because it's a pretty low damage multiplier basic. Even if you do have Spitfire, but you have to be precise with the Spitfire. So even if you do use Spitfire, it might just miss or just hit a random enemy or just for in some cases what happened in the background footage, it will just go straight down for some reason. So using those two, it just creates inconsistency and doesn't necessarily make the character really quickly in terms of damage output. With the basic attack speed fire combination, which is the strategy for the most part that you should be doing in late to end game as a Draco, 
it's still somewhat inconsistent in terms of kill time because Spitfire is very reliant on you actually hitting the enemy and the basic attack is pretty low in damage multiplier. If you do have the ultimate ability, then the ultimate ability actually re uh, release that in terms of like the basic attack, but the Spitfire does the same thing, it has the same problem. That's the thing with the, with the Draco that I pretty much noticed. It's just that it's pretty inconsistent, the fact that if you want to kill enemies fast, you need to be using something like the Burn Offering, the Burning Ward, so you can actually do the big burst damage so you can one shot. But if you do that, it takes a while, it's a setup, so it's not necessarily fast. But if you go into the instant damage route, which is just basic attack and Spitfire, it's still not going to be very effective because of the really low damage multiplier and the relying on you actually hitting with Spitfire. And yeah, that's the inconsistency that I noticed with the Draco when I was using it in Uber 10. It kills fast, don't get me wrong, the DPS is insane. But the thing is, in Uber 10, DPS doesn't matter a whole lot. The only thing when it matters is very, very early on. But late end game, mid game, like, like at that point all you need is character that does high damage multiplier character that can one shot character that can just person ability everything dies in front of it that's those are the characters that you want to use for dungeon grinding characters like the knight the vanguardian revenant ice age even to an extent like the neon ninja like those characters can actually one shot yeah the only exception might be the Dino Tamer, but the Dino Tamer has really good crowd control and it can still dish out pretty hefty damage with the basic attack. Even if the basic attack is not a one-shot type of material, it's still really good. But the thing is with the Dino Tamer, the Dino Tamer is not necessarily good at early on in the game. Like early mid game is not where the Dino Tamer truly shines because what you want on a Dino Tamer is a character that you can actually properly use the character without the Neo using Arcane Emblem. So you can actually fully utilize that movement speed that you actually do get with the ultimate ability because if you are using arcane emblem at that point just use the vanguardian you are moving faster and you're one-shotting so yeah high dps characters are not necessarily good for dungeon grinding and even less if the character is a setup character like the pirate the chloromancer or in this case the draco these characters are setup characters that you have to throw everything down if you want to do the highest dps possible so that's the problem that i had with the draco because you know that's why it creates inconsistency with the character now that i talk about like pretty much an overarching just from the testing that i did with the draco that's pretty much the opinion and all of the things that i noticed while using the draco it still kills pretty fast it still can just do one insane burst damage with burn offering but everything takes a long time the amount of average time that i actually did i was actually doing slower times with my draco without vampire and vanquisher but with trailblazing and pretty much all the rest of the movements with buff i was doing dungeons slower than my ice age without trail trailblazing and without vampire and vanquisher so two very very important movement speed buff which is minus 40 movement speed from those two abilities and i was not using the ultimate ability to gain an advantage to get the plus 50 movements for an ult so i can actually have a somewhat even playing field and i was still clearing out dungeons quicker with my ice age granted yes my ice age is maxed out while well, my draco is 33.4 i do believe as of right now but still it doesn't necessarily matter because you know at that point characters like you know the difference is not that much uh, over 33 34 000 power rank so that's the thing that i noticed with this character so that's why i needed to just talk about this character more in general because this is something that i needed to point it out there uh, and the reason also i'm talking about more of this character is because last time that i did the thing with the draco i got flagged for it for some reason even though so in some of the complaints that i got was already answered in the same video but i'm going to say yes the draco is a very very interesting character yes the draco is strong yes the draco can do high dps but that doesn't make the character good for dungeon grinding because all of the problems that i just mentioned it's a setup character meaning that it's slow it doesn't have the highest damage multiplier because the highest multiplier is six which is average in terms of damage multiplier but the that damage multiplier is single target and it requires you to just be precise so if you do miss that's it so it's pretty much work similar to like the neon ninjas just shuriken without the class gem ability you know it's not necessarily a good thing and that class and that shuriken does more damage than the spitfire from uh from the dracom and aside from just being slow it's also you know it doesn't have the best survivability characters with really good survivability that are just low they can just be pretty decent for example something like the tomb racer the tomb racer doesn't necessarily kill the fastest but the survivability is just makes it so easy to use 
don't, doesn't mean that the Draco is not easy to use. The Draco is pretty easy to use and pretty easy to be effective. But the thing is, it's just that you do so much just to do below average dungeon clear time. So if that makes any sense. So you, you want to clear out dungeons as fast as possible. Even if you do have the lava movement speed buff and the highest potential movement speed in the entire game, you want to clear out dungeons really, really quickly. Which the only thing that you might be able to do it is with the ultimate ability and just attacking with basic and spitfire but at that point you need to be end game so early mid games is just no good so uh, late to end game you are already killing uh, pretty fast but at that point every single character is already killing pretty fast every single character is just either one shotting or just killing in two hits even the highest potential of this character is still below average so that's pretty much all of the things that i wanted to talk about the draco now let's move on to all of the abilities and all of this statistic with the character and how does every single ability work out. So first and foremost, let's start talking about the passive ability Fireborn. So the passive ability Fireborn is just going to be this ability that is going to work as two buffs. So it has two abilities. Number one is going to be the burn. Number two is going to be the lava movement speed buff or the lava buff. So the burn is just going to be a debuff that applies whenever you hit an enemy with a basic attack or spitfire. So whenever you hit them with either of those two abilities, you're going to apply a quote-unquote burn, which is just a debuff allowing you yourself and all nearby players to do 2.5% more damage. This is exactly the same as the Revenant's passive ability or one of the passive abilities from the Revenant, but instead of the Revenant's 5%, this one is 2.5, which is half. And yeah, that's pretty much how it is. It lasts for 5 seconds and the timer refreshes every time you hit an enemy again. So for the most part, you're going to always apply this debuff. And the other thing is just going to be the insane movement speed buff. When we're talking about Giro Toss side, because uh, before you say something that, oh, yes, it's insane in Fireworld, I know. I know it's insane, and I know it's insane in also like Volcanic Vault. But in Geo Toss side, there are some dungeons that actually do have lava, but this is not a consistent movement speed buff. This is just a somewhat inconsistent. The, you, the only one that you can just find the somewhat consistent is on one three-star dungeon. If I do recall correctly, and I do believe there's two five-star dungeons that actually have uh, at least a decent amount of lava on them. But for the most part, it's just one three-star dungeon and that's it. So for the most part, you're not going to get a huge benefit from, the, from that and it only lasts for three seconds. It gives you a plus 75% increase to your movement speed, which is the highest movement speed buff in the entire game, which is insane. It's even higher than the level 9 Path Painter, even higher than Shadow Flip for Neon Ninja. It's 75%. It's, that's why the Draco has the potential of being the highest movement speed character in the entire game without any glitches. Yeah, the Draco movement speed buff is insane. The, also, the other thing that you do get is that you barely take any damage from Lava. I do believe you take 99% less damage. And the damage ticks are just much slower. Instead of just being like twice per second, I do believe it's just going to be like once a second. So you take the damage less frequent and you take a lot less damage with the passive ability. So yeah, that's pretty much what it is with the passive ability Fireborn. It's decent, it's just there. That's pretty much how I like to call it out there. It's just there. It's, when it works, it works. But the majority of the time, you're barely even going to notice it. So that's pretty much my verdict with the Fireborn passive. Then we move on to the basic attack. The basic attack is just going to be, again, below average for the most part. It does 1.5 times damage multiplier, it has a range of 6 blocks, it attacks at 4 attacks per second base without any increase to any attack speed because the attack speed on this character is straight on 0 so you don't get any increase. It pretty much means that it's the third fastest basic attack without any attack speed buff but once you include all the attack speed buff it's among the lowest, it's below average and combine that with 1.5 times damage multiplier, yeah, it's not necessarily very strong. And the crowd control is just going to be like a cone a three block cone in front of the Draco, so one and a half for each side, so it's just like a radius of three blocks, and that's it. And, and yeah, that's pretty much the basic attack. The basic attack is pretty mediocre at most. Um, in terms of damage multiplier, it's average. In terms of range, it's average. Attacks per second, you know, can be quite fast, but in terms of actual attacks per second maximum, it's below average. So yeah, and the current control is just average. So yeah, it's below average, it's just a below average basic attack, average to below average depending on how you look at it. But for the most part, it's a utility basic, but also at the same time, it is a basic attack that you're going to use quite a lot. 
So similar to something like the Neon Ninja, utility basic, but the Neon Ninja you use it pretty much for shuriken. This one you use it for destroying burnt offerings and also for Spitfires. So you will be using this basic attack quite a lot. So that's going to be with the Draco basic. Next up is going to be Spitfire. Spitfire is just going to be the little familiar that is going to be on your right. The ability, what it does is when you attack with your basic attack, you are going to charge out your familiar. After three hits with the basic attack, you are going to charge it up, press the ability from the Spitfire, and you're going to throw a small fireball. That fireball is going to dish out two lines of damage, direct and AoE. Now, this is exactly the same as the Neon Ninja Shuriken because you had to hit enemies three times with your basic. So being three times with your basic attack, it means no cooldown how many hits that you have to hit. So if you do hit three enemies at the same time, you can you are going to charge it up immediately. Similar to the Neon Ninja Shuriken, exactly the same. Once you press the ability from Spitfire, you're going to throw down a little projectile that you can go as far as 27 blocking distance. It does two lines of damage, direct damage AoE. Direct damage does two, AoE does four. This is the only ability, if I do recall correctly, that does more AoE damage than uh, direct damage. So that's a total of six times damage multiplier. And the AoE is a two by two in radius for the Spitfire to actually just do damage to all enemies around it. And that's it. This ability, for the most part, you're barely even going to notice it. But this is a re uh, that ability is just really, really good for momentum because it's instant cast as long as you have the charge up. And if you press the ability, you can just kill an enemy instantaneously. So that is pretty much the best ability that you have with the Draco for Uber 10 grinding. Because obviously it is going to be instant cast, 6 times damage multiplier. It can one shot. It, it pretty much is the best ability that the Draco has for dungeon grinding. The thing is, it's very hard to spot. It's pretty much single target. The AoE is super small. And not only that, projectile can just be somewhat wonky. Because sometimes it will just go downwards for some reason so it will have like very very odd and um, targeting system so yeah it's it's just weird it's a weird projectile but it's pretty much going to work as your best ability so make sure to use it as, as soon as you see bosses just make sure to use it or as soon as you see enemies make sure to use them so you can gain a lot of sp momentum so this is going to be your momentum type ability or your one shotting type ability now let's move on to the both the burnt offering and the class gem ability, Burning Ward. So Burn Offering, Burning Ward, it works exactly the same. The only thing is that Burning Ward, the class gem, actually spawns the minion. That's it. So what it does is, you press the ability, you throw down a bomb. That bomb is going to stay there and for 3 seconds. After 3 seconds, it's just going to detonate, dealing damage to all enemies around it. I do believe the radius is 6 blocks. Also, you can actually use basic attack or pretty much any damage source to detonate it much quickly. I do believe it's two or three basic attacks or two or three hits before it detonates. It says two, but I sometimes my testing has shown three, so it is either two or three. So that's pretty much all I, all I gotta say. So it's either two or three hits and it's going to detonate. The class gem ability is an amplification to already this. It does exactly the same thing that I just mentioned, but it has a 100% chance to spawn a mini version of your ultimate ability. So that's pretty much how it does work out. Now let's start talking about the properties. First of all, damage. It does a 4.5 times damage multiplier, and you can throw it as far as you can. So as long as it hits a block, once it hits a block, it's just going to drop down and that's it. Once it detonates, it has a 6 block radius, and yeah, and with the class gem ability, it will spawn a little minion. That little minion is just going to attack the first enemy that it sees, attacking it for 6 lines of damage per 1 second. I do believe it's every single second it will do 6 lines of damage, and then it will charge up for like a quarter of a second, and then it will shoot again. It will keep doing that for 13 seconds. You can have a maximum up to 6 minions at once. The damage multiplier on the minute is 0.75 per line, so 0.75 times damage per attack that it does. So that's going to be how it does work out. That's pretty much all of the properties if i didn't forget anything so yeah now let's start talking about the the good things and the bad things for dungeon grinding uh, for this ability for dungeon grinding this pretty much is a much weaker version of the glitter bomb from fate trickster without the clash gem obviously let's knock out the clash gem the burn offering itself so it does the same damage as glitter bomb it has pretty much the same radius it costs more energy i do believe burn offering costs 65 and the Glitter Bomb costs like 30. Glitter Bomb can stun and needs instant cast pretty much for the most part. And in the case of this one, you have to hit it with the basic attack or hit it with any damage source so you can detonate to do exactly the same damage. So for the most part, Burn Offering is not that good. 
It can be pretty decent just to throw it down for Curse Call, activate it, and just wait until everything detonates. But at that point, just activate it and just keep throwing Glitter Bomb. Enemies will be stunned. Enemies will die just as fast as just throwing down all the Burn Offerings. Now, if we talk about the Clash Gem ability, the Clash Gem ability is only good to clear out all of the mobs. Or, if you are early, early on in the game, it will help out in killing the bosses really quickly because the DPS is rather high. So, that's the thing with the Burn Offering, Burning Ward, and all that stuff. This is a really good ability for other content, but for dungeon grinding it's just meh. Uh, because for the most part you're going to kill the enemy before they, uh, the minions even do anything. So um, this is going to be only for high DPS purposes, so if you do need the high DPS, that's pretty much the only way that I can see the Clash Gem being useful. But aside from that, no, not very useful. Just only if you are very low stats, so you can actually apply a, a really high burst damage and good DPS. That's it. But for the most part, for Dungeon Grinding, not so good. Let's be real. Now let's move on to the actual really good ability for Dungeon Grinding. And probably the only reason the Draco is not literally bottom tier in the game is going to be Avatar of Flame, the ultimate ability. So the ultimate ability, pretty much to just sum it up, you press the ability, you pretty much go lunacy mode, but in the version of Draco. You transform and you get a lot of stats. So the stats that you're going to get are going to be as follows. You're going to get 200 stability, you're going to get plus 300% to your health regeneration. You're going to get plus 50% to your bonus magic damage. You're going to get double the amount of damage with your basic attack. You're going to also get yourself plus 10 movement speed. And last but not least, you'll also get yourself a plus 50% damage reduction. So you get a lot of stats with this and it lasts for 15 seconds and it has a 40 second cooldown. So you can have pretty much a 50% uptime with this ability if you do have cooldown reduction food like the purple little food. So, it's really, really nice. Uh, aside from all of that, you actually do get yourself um, an increased uh, attack rate from your basic attack. Aside from the damage that you also do get, uh, the double damage, so you are doing 3 times damage multiplier from your basic, you will also be attacking at 5.5 attacks per second instead of 4. So, the basic attack just becomes really, really powerful with this character. Really good attacks per second really good damage multiplier it's it's a really solid basic attack but the thing is you're just using a, an ability to pretty much do the same thing that the knight already does without the, any ability whatsoever this is pretty much a somewhat similar version of the knight's basic attack with max attack speed it's literally the same thing you're going to attack just as fast you're going to do slightly more damage but you only have a 15 second duration in the case of the knight that's default that's Pretty much what you have by default with your basic the thing with the ultimate ability is that it does so many things and considering the amount of weaknesses that i just already covered with this character this character requires uh, a lot of things to make it work and the thing is that the ultimate ability does so many things that are just very beneficial with this character you know they lack survivability you have damage reduction they lack in terms of like really strong instant cast ability or really strong instant damage from abilities then you also have a high higher magic damage pull and you also have double damage with your basic attack not only that you also gain a little bit of extra movement speed so you can move around a little bit quickly but if you want to use this effectively you have to use this ultimate ability to something that suits your playstyle. so for example if you're a lower pr player with trouble with survivability then you might just use this for you know whenever you get in yourself into a dungeon so you can actually help you out with survivability due to the damage reduction if you're just lacking in damage which is pretty difficult with this character considering the high dps but if you're lacking in damage then maybe just using this character for the damage purposes might be just the way to go so you can actually kill enemies really quickly so you don't have to use burnt offering so you can use the basic attack or if you just want to move around from dungeon to dungeon much quickly, then just add the plus 10 movement speed and just a little extra movement speed and the better momentum because you will be able to one shot regular enemies with this basic attack like no problem. But the thing is, it's just so many things from one ability just to help out with the uh, with the many weaknesses that this character already has. And that's the thing with Avatar of Flame. Avatar of Flame is a really, really good ability, but the thing is, it just uh, has so many things going against it at the same time so many things going for it because you have to use this ability carefully and again why do you want to think so much to use an ability to do the same thing that you can do with something like a knight for example the knight can already one shot the knight has a, a, an equally strong basic attack 
and it has the damage reduction from the ultimate ability separately to all of the things that I just mentioned. At that point, just use something like a knight, you will be doing pretty much exactly the same thing, but even better. So yeah, hashtag knight plug because I'm a knight main, but uh, yeah, this is pretty much the best comparison that I can give with this gear to with the Avatar of Flame. It, it is what it is. It does help out greatly with DPS, but again, like I just mentioned, DPS doesn't matter in top side. So take that as you will. Anyways, that's going to be everything for the Draco. If I am going to apologize with this just being more of a quote unquote ranty video, more of a ram uh, ramble type of video, but I needed to talk about because that's how difficult this character was for me to actually properly form an opinion. But I also needed to talk about this character in general, considering the, my past experience with this character in general with some other individuals that, you know, I needed to address all of those things as well. Now, I'm going to mention one more thing. This is my own personal opinion of using the character, looking at the stats, all that jumble on that stuff. Use the character that you like. The character can still be effective in Uber 10. Any character can be effective, doesn't matter how weak or how strong they are. Every single character is good. Can just work out perfectly if you have enough stats. Stats matter more than everything in this game. However, if you're looking at, at a comparison between this and the other character, this is below average and pretty much at its best, it's going to be average. So maybe in the best portion of the game might be just late and end game. That's where you're going to see the character at its best. Early game might only be really good if you do have something like a Vampire and Vanquisher or a Cubic Current, more so Vampire and Vanquisher. So if you have a survivability and power gem ability, then maybe uh, early game might be really good because of the high DPS and it will allow you to just kill dungeons much quickly comparable to most of the other characters. But once you start hitting mid game, you're going to hit a wall immediately because most of the other characters are just going to kill just as fast, if not faster, and they will just be moving faster from dungeon to dungeon. That's going to be pretty much my own personal opinion. Anyways, that's going to be everything for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking as always. Leave a like, subscribe for more content like this. And the next episode is just going to be on the Chloromancer. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and keep on hunting. See ya.